When you think of all of the INTJs that we've coached and worked with over the years, I think it's fair to say that when they suffer from the imposter syndrome, they really don't play well with others because they hold this, you know, always trying to prove their competence, which comes across as competitiveness to others, especially because they're not seeing themselves as clearly as they they need to see. And if they're not getting feedback and they're not getting input, especially from their bosses around how well they actually are doing, they they just keep competing. You, you know, we've we've had the experience where they become a disruptive force um, on the team, um, demanding that the team pay attention to the things that, that they feel are really important. And they're so far ahead of their colleagues, you, you know, and, and thinking that their colleagues are rejecting them, that they actually reject themselves as well as reject their colleagues or they get mad at their colleagues for not affirming them. But they don't have that line of sight to, oh, I am ahead of everyone. Oh, others don't understand and I have to spend more time and I have to to get into these details and help build understanding and you know persuade them to see what I'm seeing they can make other people feel very incompetent in their attempt to get others to recognize them they just don't see themselves particularly clearly and on top of that, these people, because, you know, their brain is wired to see the future and see what's possible, you know, they don't spend a whole lot of time being human, as, as Heather and I like to call it, and other intuitive thinking types um, the same. It's like they don't really um, get grounded in reality, and so they don't spend time investing in their relationships with their analytical minds and rational approach, they really find it challenging to embrace the more human aspects of themselves. 